Hi, I'm Joel Grimes with the Joel Grimes Academy where I hopefully shed some light on things like modifiers, which we're going to talk about today, uh, understanding how modifiers work. I also talk about all sorts of things, including lighting, business, uh, how to be a photographer, how to make a living with photography uh, with your camera. And so I've been doing this a while. So let me talk about um, the basics of modifiers, and I think it's important to understand this because you may be scratching your head thinking, I don't understand, I've got some problems here. And um, when I teach uh, lighting, I talk about the basic construction of a modifier. So let's take a look at that. Now, you see there's a diffusion on the front, right? There's an inner baffle. You have your strobe mount right there. So you put your strobe in there, it blasts light through, and then it comes through two pieces of diffusion. Now, when I first started out with photography and I had umbrellas, umbrellas um, were really about the only choice I had other than you could buy a big, maybe a big silk uh, or use flats. I wasn't that, that sophisticated back in then, but I did use umbrellas, but I used them all wrong. The reason why I used umbrellas wrong is because I took my standard back then. It was a pack on the ground. You had your you know, cord with a hood, uh, a light you know, that you'd mount. And it had a hood on the front, a, like a regular standard hood. Usually that hood's about a 50 to 60 degree uh, a throw of light. I'd put that on that rod, you know, and I'd, I'd you know, set it all up. And I'd put it five feet from my subject, take a picture, and it was always harsh. So I thought, oh, I'm going to get a soft box. That makes sense. So I got a soft box, and indeed it was softer. Now, I didn't understand why, but at the time I went with it, and I never used umbrellas. Well, what it was I was doing wrong was I had uh, that 60 inch umbrella, say, and I had my setup was casting a light into the middle of the umbrella and giving me maybe at most a 30 inch hot spot in the center of the umbrella. So I was have basically had a 30 inch umbrella at five or a 30 inch modifier at five feet, which is a very harsh source. Now, if I got that in a foot and a half, two feet, it'd be pretty soft. But at five feet, it was not very attractive light. So it took me, well, until 10 years ago when I finally cracked the code on lighting, I figured it all out. I go, now I know what I was doing wrong. I wasn't spreading the light across the full umbrella. So the bigger the source in relationship to your subject, the softer the light. So if I take that umbrella, leave it where it's at, and I take that hood off, back it on that rod as far as I can, spread that light as much as I can across that umbrella, that broadens my light, which makes it softer to my subject. So with that, you also have to understand how regular softbox works. I have an inner baffle. I have a piece of diffusion, so there's two pieces of diffusion. I thought if you had three pieces of diffusion, that would make it even softer. Kind of makes sense, but that's not true. You're not broadening the light. Now, if you take the baffle out, you take and shoot your strobe through there. You get a hot spot in the middle. It tapers off to, you know, very little light on the corners. That's going to be a hot spot, a small modifier. So if I set this up at three feet from my subject, I shoot without the, the baffle, take a picture, take a look at it. It's going to be pretty harsh. I take and put my baffle in. It's going to be softer. I move it in. It's going to be softer. I back it up. It's going to be harsher. So that's a basic uh, kind of... I guess you'd say lighting 101. So it's kind of confusing. So um, you can take, for example, and I do this on occasion, you can take a big silk, like I have the scrim gems, the Westcott scrim gems. I have a piece of diffusion on there and I set it up. I can take any source. I could take this or an umbrella or just even a regular, just light by itself. As when I, when I back that light up every time, it's going to soften the light to my subject. It's going to spread across that diffusion. So the, the wider I have the, 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 the light hitting that diffusion, the softer the light. So that's how I get, uh, that's how the uh, modifiers are designed to be able to spread the light evenly across your front diffusion. You can test this by taking a picture, stop down, take a little bit of power, take your power down low. Take a picture of your front of your modifiers. And if you still have a hot spot after you have a, a, a baffle in there, you have a poorly designed modifier. So that's how uh, the, the boxes work. Now we have a beauty dish. This is um, the world's greatest, most amazing beauty dish ever designed on the planet. Why do I say that? Well, because my name's on it. 
Now, I'm just a joke. I, I kind of feel embarrassed sometimes doing that. But the fact is, is I went to Westcott and said, you guys need to uh, produce a, uh, a beauty dish that collapses. And for four years, I kept hounding them. Finally, they said, well, you design it. So this is part, and now they had a team help me, but I came up with this concept, uh, 16 rods. Um, it's got the, uh, the, beef, the dish in the, in the center. When Westcott first, the first prototype, that dish was sitting out here. I did my test. I said, nope, 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 nope. It's got to go back. And we had to, we had to change the length of the, or the, the depth of the modifier so that I kept doing my test. My goal was to get this piece of diffusion on the front of this modifier to be evenly distributed across the, the surface. That was my goal. Once I get that, I got my beauty dish. Now, you can take and say, shoot this without a, a, the diffusion on the front. It's gonna be a much harsher source. Um, sometimes you can actually see the ribs in here a little bit in the eyes, not bad. Um, so you can experiment with that. They also make the silver now interior, which is a little more snappy. So this goes back to um, the modifiers, like the soft boxes, they have white interior, silver interior. I thought the first time I heard, oh, silver, what's that do? Well, all it's gonna do is give you a little more punch through that diffusion. It doesn't really make it harsher. You might say, if you really you know, got nitpicky, it might be a little more punchy, a little more snappy, I don't know. But it really, it's how broad your source is and how far that source is from your subject. So with that information, you can pretty much understand how modifiers work. Now, the, what you pay for in a modifier is not this front piece of diffusion, generally. Most of the modifiers on the planet will give you a pretty clean, daylight balanced, um, not yellowed, you know, piece of, um, you know, di di diffusion. Uh, what you do, though, is you pay for the construction and how easy you can set it up and tear it apart. That's what you pay for. You want a modifier that you can tear down, set up, tear down, set up, oh, I don't know, in a given year, 100, 500, I don't know, times, whatever, um, and it still holds up. And then five years later, it still looks the same. Maybe a little, a little bit of wear and tear, but it still works. Your modifier should last you about 10 years. So you get what you pay for in the construction of the modifier and the ease of setting and tearing it down. That's what you pay for. So that's what I would say. Don't get enamored by the name, even though it says Joel Grimes on here, don't buy it just because it has my name on it. Uh, though my wife would make it would be a lot happier if you did. I'm just kidding. It's all about you taking these tools and going out and creating amazing pictures. So you got you figured out what your work what what works best for you, but I hope that sheds a little bit of light on the subject. Get out and create some pictures. Well, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell so you can always be caught up on my latest content.